Today, we're going to find out why QCC3020 chip is not only about aptx support let's get into it good morning everyone kenneth here and back again with another video thank you so much for clicking on this video this is going to be quite a technical talk but i bet if you click on this video you are you know interested in the same stuff that i'm interested in so yeah my question to you first and foremost have you ever wondered why every budget earbuds until let's say up to 100 bucks they all use the same freaking chip qcc 3020 you can see it in all of these earbuds right now we have the tron smart spunky beat this is some of the cheaper ones halo gt1 xr alongside gt1 plus that goes as low as 20 flipping bucks all the way up until this beast right here the light protect heavy that goes at 89 or something like that and i'm gonna tell you here that it's not only about supporting aptx as a codec there are benefits by going with the qualcomm chip instead of all the other chips that are out there those are related to the battery life which means longer play time and also better phone calls with the cvc we're going to talk about later and lastly then it is the abtx codec support which means better quality music if you have to file that you know it takes advantage of it so before we start talking i would really appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up subscribe for more videos and also if you notice here i have the tranya b530 tron smart onyx free and the ugreen high tune which i haven't even unboxed yet so definitely subscribe for those reviews in the future okay let's get started into why qualcomm chips qualcomm has separated their chips into two different uh you know regions here and first is the entry level qcc 30xx chip which means you know 3020 3040 something like that and those are their entry level made cheap but still got some of the good technology from their higher end flagship chips which is the qcc 5100 series you can see that on the transmart apollo bolt which i'm going to review soon that uses qcc 5124 oh my god qcc 5124 QCC5124, Qualcomm actually just released a new generation of these chips a couple months back and they are naming it still the same 30 and 51 but it has 3040 instead of 3020 and also 5140 instead of 5120. So now let's check out what are all the chips that Qualcomm has right now. So we can see right here, this is the official Qualcomm document for their product lineup. And the highlights here are actually not that much different. That's because, you know, in the 30, xx family you have the lower end chip and also the higher end chip and the higher end chip is actually pretty similar to the flagship series one that sticks out to me is the ultra low power here basically they are both the same they are so very efficient and you can see here 10 hours with just a 65 milliamp hour battery and that is actually the truth here i have tested like mpow t5 live protect heavy and many other earbuds will qualcomm chip and when they have like about 60 milliamp hour battery inside which is the case with the ugreen high tune here you will get 10 flipping hours of music play time at 50 percent and that is just crazy efficient you won't get that on any other earbuds that really enables the 40 milliamp hour battery on the halo gt1 plus or like the tron smart spunky beat to last close to six hours when they're used on sbc or aac so that's one advantage these chips are very very efficient compared to the others and that i can take advantage of when i'm using an iphone so when i'm reviewing true wireless earbuds with qualcomm chip but i don't use the aptx that doesn't mean that my review is invalid so yeah i hope you understand there the first benefit is you will get longer battery life i've said this time and time again if we're using a qualcomm chip but we don't use the aptx you will still take advantage of the longer play time that are offered by these really efficient chips so that's one good thing 
Okay, let's move on to the next one, high quality wireless audio. And also this is a new feature here, it's called Qualcomm True Wireless Mirroring. And that is basically the dual mode Bluetooth that you know we've all understood, right? Actually Qualcomm is a little bit late to the party here. So let's take a look at Qualcomm's explanation of what their true wireless technology is. We have two versions of Qualcomm true wireless here. First is stereo and then the second one is mirroring. And basically what mirroring does is one earbud connects to your phone and the other one just mirrors what is playing on the other side. Whenever you take that master earbud put it on the case and turn it off, the right side will not pause, there won't be any interruption, and it will just seamlessly switch between the earbuds. You know, basically just a dual mode we all know and love. And the Qualcomm True Wireless Stereo is, you know, the older method of pairing, but it's slightly better than the master slave earbuds because when you pair to one, the other side will automatically switch to pairing mode and request a pairing to your phone. So you're automatically paired to both sides and then you can switch between them pretty easily, but there will be an interruption. So if you are putting the master earbud into the case, the music will pause, but don't worry because the other side will reconnect to your phone in just a couple seconds, like six or seven seconds or so. This is actually what you get from the QCC3020 unless you are using a Qualcomm chipped phones. In that case, you will be connected to both earbuds at the same time and then you can just switch between them very seamlessly. I've tested it on my phone's brother once, it was the Redmi K20 Pro. So yeah, that's about Qualcomm True Wireless Mirroring and that is actually also new feature. You can see right here, it's only available on QCC 34X devices, which is the newer generation that replaces the QCC 32X older chips that are present on basically all of these earbuds. So now let's check out this table right here. We can see all the features that Qualcomm has for their entry level earbuds. And you can see here QCC3020 is right here. This is the chip that we are dealing with with all of these earbuds. First, we have Qualcomm True Wireless Stereo and not True Wireless Mirroring. Next is we have aptX Audio, but not aptX HD. This is only to the entry level chips. And that's actually true for all of these earbuds, especially the Halo T19 right here because they marketed it wrong, I think, uh, by putting aptX HD there, but it's nowhere to be seen in the box. That's because it just doesn't support it. And also next is Qualcomm Active Noise Cancellation. It doesn't have it. And you, can you see right down here, the QCC3040 supports active noise cancellation. So Qualcomm is bringing ANC down to entry level earbuds. And that is very exciting for me. I'm really stoked to check that one out, but we'll have to see until the first batch of QCC3040 earbuds will ship. And now let's check out the rest of the features that Qualcomm has here. And this is also very important. It's Qualcomm CVC 8.0. And we can see there are one mic and two mic variant here, and they all actually support this. So that's not really a problem. It's just a matter of the manufacturer, whether they want to include one mic or two microphones. And usually earbuds with stem will have two mics on each earbud. That's why Transmart Onyx Ace is branded as like quad mics that's because they have two and they make use of the cvc2 mic here that's available on qcc3020 and yeah this is a big part about why all those earbuds with qualcomm chip perform really well on phone calls so the last thing is qualcomm broadcast audio but none of the chips except the two like on the bottom last here that supports it not really sure but if you know let me know what it functions. Maybe it broadcasts audio to another device. But anyway, that's pretty much it for all the features. And let's see what will we get in the next batch of True Wireless Earbuds that uses QCC3040. First, we have Qualcomm True Wireless Mirroring. So this is true dual mode. No more disconnection between left and right earbud when you are switching. Next, we don't have aptX HD support. That's still for the more expensive flagship chipset, which we're going to briefly take a look later. Later. And also right now, this is the most important part that I talked about. We have ANC built in. So everything with QCC 3040 or QCC 3046, they will have active noise cancellation and that 
is great. So let's sum everything up here. With the Qualcomm QCC3020 chip that's present on basically all of these earbuds, what do you get? First, if you're not using aptX, let's say if you have a phone that doesn't support it or you use an iPhone, you will use AAC or SBC. You know, that depends on what the phone supports. Sometimes they only support SBC and most of the time iPhones use AAC. You will get longer battery life. That's a guaranteed when compared to other chips. But when you do use aptX, expect the battery life to drop about an hour that's about my uh you know experience here with the tron smarts and the halo gt1 plus and a second one is latency yes aptx will be better in this regard i've tested it on my video right here it does perform very good when you're using aptx just like a tier 2 gaming mode earbuds i explain all the tiers in my top 2020 Truas earbuds in the gaming section right there. So it's about 250 millisecond in real life playing PUBG, which is very good already. But if you want the best of the best, you will still have to pony up and get the QCC 5100 series with the aptX adaptive there for the best of the bets. Or you can always get the Redmi Air Dots S, which I found to be absolutely killing it 150 millisecond for gaming on any phone basically any modern phone with bluetooth 5.0 so that's amazing and crazy at the same time now when you don't use aptx let's say you're using spc or aac you're gonna get great latency on videos on youtube netflix stuff like that the latency is only 150 millisecond with all the qcc 3020 i found them to be exactly the same basically carbon copy of each other when it comes to latency on my iPhone or my iPad or whatever device that I have and the gaming mode when used on SBC or AAC that's actually it's only one downside it's not that great it hovers around 400 millisecond which is pretty high so that's number two the third one is the call quality basically because of the CVC technology you're gonna get better call quality compared to other earbuds that doesn't use Qualcomm's chip that's just a given that's I, I don't know why but cvc it's really killing it right now i found also real tech's chip that's on the kz earbuds perform pretty well but they are not as good as the qualcomm chips when it comes to battery life codec support gaming mode even and stuff like that so yeah i still think qualcomm is just really on top of the game right here and that's number three great call quality number four is then now if you have a phone that supports a btx you will get lower latency better connectivity in terms of qcc 3020 because both are connected to your phone and also the last one and most important one is the higher bit rate codec which is the aptx and that enables playback of better music files but then you have to have a better music file to start so if you're using only 120 20 kilobytes or 180 OGG codec in Spotify, you won't get much benefit if at all because on the iPhones, right? For example, I'm using Apple Music. It already has music files in AAC. So the earbuds are just streaming that AAC straight to my ear. But if you're streaming on OGG, for example, on Spotify, that's gonna be converted to SBC if your phone doesn't support AAC. And then all that conversions will cause quality loss in the process. And that's also kind of why I stand by AAC. I think it's good enough for everyday to day music listening on the iPhones. I have no problem with that at all. But you know, if you have flag files, FLAC, WAV files, or also the premium subscription of Tidal, now with that, you will notice hopefully the difference with all these earbuds that uses aptx so i think we don't really have time to talk about the 5100 series but let me know if you want me to talk about you know all these other stuff and actually on the flagship side the difference is not as big it only supports this voice activated digital assistant so you can just say hey whatever you want to call it and you know it will pop up by itself just like the google buds or airpods that is always listening. Most of them supports aptX adaptive. Let me know if you want me to talk about that, which is crazy amazing. And also aptX voice, the, new, the newer chip supports it. Hmm, I'm gonna be curious, what's that for? All right, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the talk. Thank you so much for staying around until this time. I hope you learned something new. And basically, I just wanna to explain to you that Qualcomm chips are really great. And me reviewing so many earbuds using an iPhone isn't actually a bad thing. 
thing. And if you are buying something with Qualcomm chip and you don't support aptX, don't fret because you still get all the other benefits, but aptX. So that's pretty much it for the video. Thank you so much for staying and you know talking around with me. Leave me down in the comments below what questions if you have anything. And also don't forget to leave the thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Before glow up and BAM! <laughs> and now let's check out the features that we have left here. This is the Qualcomm CVC. And this is what? Ah, really? Gila, 2938 gua udah hampir itu dong. Coding limit.